I've had this Leica for about uh, three, four months now and uh, just wanted to quickly come on and shoot this video um, on my experiences with it so far and uh, I've buying my dream camera basically so yeah so going into 2024 um, all my work that I was mainly shooting was on the uh, Mamiya 645 which you would have seen from some of my previous videos getting like 15 pictures from that from a roll of film but I I found that I was just shooting medium format I had no 35 mil sort of pictures during end of 2023 and start of 2024 at all um, the only 35 mil cameras that I had were the Canon AV1 and the A1 but they just sat on the shelf and they weren't getting used at all so yeah, going into 2024, I really wanted to sort of change that and uh, pick up a 35mm camera again. Also because of cost, because it's a lot of money. Um, you know, the AV1 that I had that I used most most of the time previously, you know, they, it's an SLR, right? So they're loud, they're clunky. Um, with mine as well, I found it quite hard to sort of like get focus with a split prism focus thing, uh, screen. So that was one thing that I didn't really like. And also I'm left eye dominant. So which means that like if I was using it, I'd be like that rather than that. So I was always sort of like hiding behind the camera rather than like to the side of it, um, which I think is, you know, sort of a bit intrusive when like if I'm doing street photography and I'm taking a photo of someone trying to be discreet and I'm like that they're not going to see my face and also if they see this they're going to be let because I can make eye contact with them it's going to be sort of less you know intrusive um, and they might not see anything so that was one reason why I wanted to try a rangefinder as well um, I mean, obviously, the reason why I bought the M3, firstly, yeah, rangefinder. One, the, the the one main reason why I wanted to try it was because of the rangefinder sort of setup. Um, I tried a um, a Fujifilm X Pro One in the past. I like that camera because, again, you can do that, and uh, it's just very easy and quick. You know, focusing and sort of seeing out of both eyes, you're looking at what's in front of you as well as looking at what's through the camera as well. So I sort of wanted that, that's the main reason. Um, second reason is obviously I wanted something that would last. And obviously this is seven years old this year. So everything still works, even the self timer still works. You know, um, this particular one, were, well, it's, an, it's an early, um, variant so it's a 1954 which is the first year they made them and you can tell because it's a double stroke so two strokes and it shut you know the fires um another sign that it's an early one there's different sort of speeds on the shutter speed dial um and what else there's different i think the other difference is there's different sort of lug uh, what did they call lugs i think they're called for the camera strap um but that was that's the main difference i think but yeah but obviously the m3 for me was i, I would say the best looking like i ever made and still is because you know it's a sleek design it's all silver it's brass so it's quite heavy as well um quite robust and uh it's quite discreet as well because given the weight it's obviously quite small so you know that's one thing you can sort of easily you know the lenses are quite compact as well you can easily sort of put it in your in your jumper um, and then get it out when you want to uh, but i've got the um the 50 mil uh, sumaret f1.5 on this particular camera which wasn't really a lens that i don't think gets talked about that much because everyone always goes on about the Summicrons um, and stuff like that. This lens isn't that sharp, especially below f4. It isn't that um, sort of contrasty anyway, but 
for me and the budget that I was on to get into a sort of a Leica camera. Um, I mean, you can pick these lenses up for around about £400, £500 for a mint one. I mean, this is a mint one. Um, I paid 300 for this, which is a good deal. Um, but yeah, the main thing is getting a lens which fits straight on the camera and that has got that sort of focus, which you can just go like that, you know? You don't have to keep messing around, twisting and twisting and twisting until you get focus, but it's really quick. Um, but it, it does give you a sort of a soft and <clears throat> milky look to the images, which is also a good characteristic of the lens. I don't really see many other lenses given the same sort of style as this one. Um, again, it's all about a classic look. I mean, whatever one you, you're going for, this one for, for me is definitely a winner. Um, especially if you want to go to like a Sumacron, um, Sumatau, I think is the other one, and there's, there's more but you are paying more money for it, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why. I think it's just a better lens overall. Um, I mean, I don't really want to talk about any negatives with the camera because I can't really find any. I mean, I've used it, I put, I've put about 30 or 40 rolls through it now. And the only bad thing I've got to say about it is how fast it or how slow it is to load the film because you've got to take the back off, the bot, the base plate, and then you've got to take the spool out and feed the leader into the spool, then put it all back in as one, where I think the M6 is just you drop the film straight in and then wind it on. So that's the only sort of downside I would say to this camera is that it just takes a little bit longer to load up. Um, but in all, I mean, I've loved opening this camera so far and I can't wait to keep shooting on it. Um, you know, it's, it's a dream camera of mine. I'm really grateful to be able to, to buy it. I mean, I sold the Mamiya 645 to help fund this mind, so that's gone. Um, but it's definitely a step in the right direction for me because, you know, it's a camera that I actually want to pick up and encourages me to go out and shoot just for the sake of it because it's nice to use. Um, I'm sure that there's many other cameras that could have given me that um, sort of feeling that this one was definitely the dream and the price I paid for this at the time it was just right so I had to jump at it um, but yeah there we go as always thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next time